Hola, buenas noches. Aquí estamos en el último dive de la campaña, en la estación 14, en un guillot de momento sin nombre. Y eh, vamos a intentar llegar desde los 900 metros de profundidad más o menos hasta los 230, donde se encuentra eh, la parte más somera de este Seamount. Ok. Ready. you want. Estupendo. Estamos partiendo de una profundidad más, eh, más baja que en los últimos montes en los que hemos muestreado, con lo cual eh, este rango de profundidad eh, no lo tenemos muy eh, muestreado. Uh, can we zoom the sea star, please? No, no. Last dive. Sampling all. ¿Y ahí se ve? Sí, pero mira. Ya está en momento que... Ya, es probable a Plintaster. Sí, seguramente. Sí, Cookie Star. Es a Cookie Star. Probable a Plintaster. Oh, super nice, thank you. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. We can yeah. continue. It's a little bit small to collect. Yeah. We are seeing that there is few fauna here, or at least less than in other areas and other depths. Aquí podemos ver que hay menos fauna que en otras profundidades y que en otros lugares. Veremos si cómo va a cambiar esto con el con el tiempo, con eh, la profundidad. Just for the chat, Javier has the shift at uh, nine in the morning or ten in the morning, and uh, he's on the day shift, not on the night shift.
Isladenia, ¿no, Max? Sí, Isladenia. ¿Qué? Isladenia. something but no. not. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, I think we will not be able to do the push cord here. No, you don't think we can get up through the rock? Yeah. <laughs> corales empezamos a ver y algún gasterópodo ¿Cómo es el caso de tu gasterópodo? ¿Es tu snake? Yes, for the chat we had bad weather, but now it's better than, yeah, finally we could make the dive. a lot of things. It's a nice geomorphology, but yeah. And some shrimps and some snails, but very few compared with other areas. Yeah.
Attached to the bottom. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. You can continue if you want, but they are quite beautiful. Yeah. <coughs> but we can collect them because they, when they are collected, they are destroyed. Oh. With them. Yeah. The, nothing arrives. Okay. 
Excellent. I don't know how happy he is, but he's not happy. Better, better than this section, probably. Ahora os dejo con el, la, el siguiente turno que es con Braya, que os va a presentar en el uh, kit. Well, good morning, everyone. Just taking over for Ari here for the next three hours as we explore this uh, new seamount. How's your watch going? Very good. Good. Not the crab. White thing on rock, please. a lace coral with a hermit crab on it. We've been seeing these quite commonly uh, over the ex that's great thanks. Um, we've been seeing these very commonly uh, over the course of this expedition. That's all I need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Take a look at the crinoid piece. That's all we need, thank you. Go on up to this next rock with several things on it. So we've got a, several different lace corals here. We've got one sponge, a couple more um, <clears throat> hermit crabs. Snail. Yo. We That's all the zoom we got. Um, get a good look at the sponge. collect um, the snail and one of the spark one of the less densely branched uh, white corals
That's funny. Oh, that's funny. suspect these are small enough you're probably just going to want to yep, slurp um, the coral as well. You want to slurp the coral as well? Okay. I, I'm, uh, I'm open. All right. this, these are extremely brittle pretty, and they're small brittle, enough. Yeah. I suspect okay. we're going to... One, in particular that one of want. the sparser branched ones up here on top. So like that one would work well. Same jar? Yeah, same sounds? jar is okay. fine. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right, we can continue on once you're all stored. All right, that's even the piece with the basal plate. called a base, but, base. Okay. but basil, I mean, that would make sense too. There's, it's, biologists love to give names and call them slightly different things for every different taxa, and oh, okay. I have to admit I don't even try and keep track of <laughs> foots Fair versus enough. bases versus basal plates versus hold fast versus roots <laughs> versus whatever. It's too much, too much vocabulary to keep in my brain. Probably makes me a bad biologist. But. Yeah. I generally try and break it down to whether when you pick it up, if it goes squish then crunch, just squish, or no. crunch then squish. Okay is my basic Great. way of keeping track of deep sea biology. Gotcha. <laughs> um, can we play with push course? <laughs> I know. I know. I just this is so much sand we can't pass it up. <laughs> try and get a little further away from these rocks. Though. Okay. Last time. Till next time. Till next time. But last time for this, the immediate future, hopefully.
tomorrow and just see what, see what it's like. Uh, see what this one's like if you want, but if you get them all out of the front row, it's easier to do the back row. At least I think it is. So you're not going to go over the top. But then you got to worry if you put the, if you dump the mud into the bottom. <laughs> So we've got a, a group of partner researchers on, on the boat and on shore who are um, looking at different aspects of the life that lives in the sediment here. Some are doing the macrofauna, um, the bigger things um, that are in there, burrow around and live in there. And then um, another partner that's working at the miofauna or the stuff that's smaller and kind of live in between the individual sand grains. Um, Deep sea sediment is surprisingly diverse when it comes to um, how many of the small creatures you can find uh, in the deep sea sediment. It is uh, one of those puzzles of deep sea biology and frankly biology in general uh, on why um, something that looks as kind of homogeneous as deep sea sediment in one area has the amount of diversity um, that you can find in these areas. And there's lots of hypotheses going back you know, 50 to 100 years um, trying to figure out why there's such a high level of diversity in deep sea sediment. Um, and we really don't have an answer for you yet. My favorite kind of belief is a uh, uh, hypothesis called the, uh, it's a modification on the intermediate hypothesis, or intermediate disturbance hypothesis um, that makes a mosaic of um, different life depending on when certain disturbances happen in the sediment changes the um, community and then it kind of stays that way for a long period of time and because deep sea is such a metabolically slow area um, individual effects like a whale fall or a fish fall or uh, some kind of overturn can have effects for potentially de decades um, and so all those little patchwork changes in the seafloor make a mosaic across the landscape scale uh, that supports such a wide range of hyper-specialized um, creatures that live in the sediment. But it's still an ongoing area of research and these kind of exploratory diversity analysis like we're helping support here for uh, the deep sea sediment really are valuable insights into some really fundamental questions about the controls of biodiversity of life in general. Um, can help to be answered by this kind of deep sea science.
So anyone watching at home that likes to tinker and uh, um, play around with making, I challenge you all to figure out a better way to do push coring in the deep sea. This is the best system that most people have come up with and it's pretty universal um, across vehicles. I've seen a few changes and modifications for different things, but gotta believe there's a better way to do this. And uh, so internet, I challenge you, come up with better ways to do push cores that aren't overly engineered and requiring a bunch of hydraulics and extra batteries and stuff because that's all really hard in the deep sea. give you all a sense of um, kind of where we're working here and how remote of a part of the ocean this is that 
wow, this is our last uh, ROV dive of the expedition. Uh, it's going to take most of us the better part of two weeks still to get home. We've got almost eight and a half days of uh, ship transit and then a couple days of uh, demobilization work in Antofagasta, Chile, once we get there. Um, and then, um, so while, while I feel like we're mentally kind of wrapping up the expedition, um, it's still almost two weeks until I get to see um, my family back home in, uh, in the United States. And for our European colleagues, they have an even longer transit uh, to get back to Europe once we're done. So it's eight full days of doing nothing but pointing in a straight line uh, with the ship to get back to the coast of South America. Do get a job breaking it free. We've got a nice, good long dive scheduled for our last one. Um, here we don't have to be on deck until 4 or 4.30 ship time, so we've got, you know, 10 hours plus um, still to get available to us today, um, in part because we lost, we were playing on two dives on this feature, but the uh, swells were a little too high for a few hours. Um, so instead, instead of doing two shorter dives, we've got one little bit longer dive. textbook.
super deep one here. shot you got it
closer to that and settle down. Yep. Very strange. He had it pushed down so far, but he, when he pulled it up, yeah, it was not that much. I it's agree. Really that was, weird. It was. Yeah, I don't have a good. I was wondering if the the flapper at the top was stuck open or something, and there wasn't a suction until a certain point. But I, yeah, I don't have a good explanation for that yeah. one. Yeah, pull it back out. A lot of deep sea sediment is very clay and has a, you know, sticks together, which is one of the reasons the push cores work at all. Um, that looks pretty good there, Andy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's lots of different names for different types of deep sea sediments, um, and I can't remember them all, but generally. Um, one of my favorite deep sea sediment terms is an ooze, and if a, a deep sea sediment becomes an ooze once 30% of its contact is biogenic, i.e. made of formerly living things. So you have diatomaceous ooze, you have foraminiferous ooze, um, and depending on where you are and what kind of the major planktons are, uh, that influences what the sediment type is, because that's the marine snow out here coming down is often the skeletons, tests, and poop of um, things that live higher up in the water nice. column. So if you have an area that has lots and lots of diatoms um, in the shallow water, you would, and if 30% of your deep sea sediment is diatom, you get a diatomaceous ooze.
that's so cool. And then, do you want me to move forward so you can grab them like this and put them on the rail, or you want to put them on the rail like that? If you put them on the rail like this, you'll be able to see. So while the, the seas have laid down enough for us to safely deploy, there's still some big sets coming through. We just had a, a good set of couple rollers where everyone's kind of bracing in the control room as the ship takes a good 10 degree, 5 to 10 degree roll in either way. Yeah, and it totally, definitely adds an extra layer of complication to find control of robotic arms when your world is, you know, frame of reference is shifting as well. Whichever one you want to put it in, Andy. Huh? Whichever one you want to put it in. Yeah. It's funny how each, each ocean has its own kind of weird idiosyncrasies. I can't explain it from any scientific or physics point of view, but I swear the oceans have different characters, and I definitely prefer working in the Pacific. Um, the big, long, rolling swell um, we get in this ocean is is much more pleasant than what I've worked in in some other areas. Um, and this is one of those really good examples of just having these big swells, you know, three, four, four and a half meters, but with long periods rolling through. So it's gentle enough to keep working, but you still get a lot of motion. And you just don't, I've just never experienced that in the Atlantic the same way. It's all right, it's holding. You're just about there. Yeah. There you go, you got some view right there. There you go, you're lined up with it. Yeah. Yep, just stand it up and let it go. Oh, yeah. all right. That's all right, it's, it's holding there. Just got to push it in. There you go, perfect. Ta-da. Silty layer, man, just destroys the viz immediately if any, any doubt that little powdery stuff kicks up. This is a good, uh, good demonstration of how fine a lot of deep sea sediments are. Um, 
you know, the, the water is rel fairly still out here um, in, compared to surface waters. There's still currents and stuff moving, but it allows for the really fine particulates yeah. to finally settle out and not get stirred back up, especially here in a, a part of the world with pretty much the clearest water anywhere. Um, I mean, it's also a good example of what large-scale industrial process on the deep sea, um, one of the major problems that can arise from that kind of heavy industry is sediment plumes. Uh, and because the sediment is so fine in a lot of the deep sea, once it gets suspended, it can go for a long distance uh, before it would settle out. And exactly how far that distance is and exactly what particulate sizes will be kicked up is very much an active matter of research and debate um, as countries and international bodies start to think about how to manage um, deep sea mining and other um, potential large-scale extractive activities in the deep sea. suck down thing again. Talking about other areas of the world's oceans, you know, the Gulf of Mexico is a is a unique place to work. Um, I've, I've been on a couple expeditions there uh, on a different vessel, um, but it's uh, you've got all the cold seeps and salt domes and brine pools and stuff, and a lot of chemosynthetic stuff. There's still definitely corals, um, but when you go looking for corals there, you use a very different kind of formula for looking. A lot of times you have what's called orthogenic carbonates or um, carbonate rock that's formed around cold seeps. Um, and that's where the corals grow. And then just the ship operations there is really interesting because there's so much oil and gas business and fishing that it's a far, far busier um, part of the ocean that's a lot more complicated to work in because there's so much heavy industry going around and shipping in a relatively small, confined body of water. It's really cool. You can see just behind the arm here, between the arm and the skid, is we've got a, a south chain um, floating by. Commonly, you see siphonophores. This is a salp, which is, well, it, it's a salp, a salp, a salp oh, chain. Okay. Um, uh, so while they look pretty similar in that uh, they're okay. chains and fairly clear, they're actually taxonomically very different. Okay. These are much closer related to us, actually, uh, than they are even the siphonophores. Okay. Cool. You get some good pictures of it. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Thanks. Great. Yeah, so even if the, if it starts draining again, we'll just take whatever we can get out of it. Yeah, I'm right that. Uh, we might have an issue with that one. Yep. But we did see a nice puff come out the top when we oh, excellent. went down the rest of the way. Thanks. So maybe we'll get a good suction on the whole thing. The yeah, and we, and the other push cores have been very thick, so we've got a good amount of sediment. Get out of the way.
for sure. So. Julian, I think you told me they called it on the shark. I went back and looked at it again. I think it's an echo yeah. from this morning. I think the nose? No, the, the nose and the caudal peduncles got that really sharp, almost tuna like look. Oh, really? yeah. Yeah. So I think you were 100% right this morning. Those of you who weren't watching this morning, right as we were recovering the vehicle, a big shark appeared in front of the ROV. Um, and uh, for for a moment, we I thought it was a great white, um, but looking back at the video, I think it was a short fin mako instead. But it was still a, a, quite a surprise. We've been seeing Galapagos sharks the last couple of days, and just kind of out of nowhere emerges yeah. this um, large one. Oh, yeah, exactly. we're gonna call that one defective. So we got seven push cores and one defective one. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna stick this back in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> the lefty one, boys. Here they come. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. They're Just in time. Oh, perfect oh, timing. Oh. Just in time. We've been watching. We're gonna yeah. come yeah. in three yeah. minutes. We know. Like, oh, no, we got one. <laughs> <laughs> this one's defective. It won't hold. It won't hold the core. Oh, there oh, there there was there was like the tube itself. Yeah. Something's happening. It's leaving all the mud inside. You have to be breaking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can see it. I don't think it's lost that yet. Come on. Come on. It's so not. Okay, that's push. Yeah, the checkpoint. Lost push. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Uh, so, all you got left is to put the cap on unless Andy wants to finish it. Oh, no, I'm finished. <laughs> Andy is. Well, then hang on. I'm going to make this easy on all of us. Actually, oh, don't run away too much. Can exactly we chip a niskin yeah. before we run too far away? You, got a lot of them. Yeah. you don't want this. You yes. don't want this dust on the niskin. Nah, right? it's true. Yeah. I'll just get us out of the cloud so we can get a decent niskin. Let's try to make it more for the best. Excuse me. <laughs> One okay. final insult. Uh, you guys need to do a missing. Yes. 
No, I want to stay close to the bottom, but if you want to hop a meter or two ahead, that's fine. Yeah. Pretty nice, pretty hop. That's probably fine. That's fine, just just fire it. Two. Yep, two works. Yeah, it's closed. You can see the tip right there, can't you? Am I looking at the right thing? Uh, you usually see a hook that comes down. I'm going to push it further because that's a little bit right here. Do you uh, want to pop yep. three just yep. in case? Totally. Go ahead and shoot three just in case. shot two and three since we couldn't confirm two was closed. Right. Instrument flight rules. Yeah. Yeah.
clear face. It's kind of cool. You got shade? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Nice. Dust cloud continues to follow. stretched out. Can we take a look at, I can't turn, that's it. There's an one or two little white clumpy things. Uh, Maybe right there. Nope, that's just sediment. I don't think I've seen any Xenophire fours yet. That's what I'm looking for right now. Again, we've been shallower for the majority of this cruise that I'm kind of used to working and I don't know what their shallowest depth range is, but I'm a little surprised that I haven't seen a single one. Well, yeah, being haunted by the dust cloud. But I'm, a, I'm imagining things. All right, thanks. You want to? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can we collect that piece?
sure. Do you want a suction or? Uh, if, 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 I'd prefer a quiver if you uh, can. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Apparently it's going to be it's smaller than we think it is. So you wanna okay. suction it. That works for me. There I am. There I am doing. Leaning, leaning to look down the <laughs> tube again. So hard. Nope. Still there. Yeah, yeah, let's put it in the, let's, let's dump it in a, let's dump it in a quiver. Right, so it puts off in it. Oh, two letters is easiest for y'all. We are basically empty on samples for the moment. Old suck it down. Urchin in quiver eleven. Yeah. 
the urchins fighting back. Yeah. The brain is fighting back. <laughs> well, it is only, you know, day 28 or whatever. Uh, day 32. Well, that was, that was graceful. <laughs> Nice long arm shrimp. See how long its sensory antenna are. It stretches more than twice its body length behind it. Really impressive um, adaptation to prevent creatures from sneaking up behind it. Yeah, that's the, I think that's the longest I've ever seen them. Deep sea security alarm. Same macaroon juvenile we saw a little while ago, it looks like. please. Oh, he's not jumping up and down excited, so. Alright, thank you. Yeah. 
found the rocks again. So we're kind of making a fast transect here at a little bit higher altitude than we normally would because uh, we're way behind schedule. Um, I spent too much time looking around at things early in the dive and so trying to cover some ground here and make sure we give time to get up into the mesophotic by the end of our dive time this afternoon. So as we think about what we'll do starting uh, on our transit back tomorrow, or I guess later today, my tomorrow, um, is uh, we uh, will start, you know, repackaging and cleaning up the samples and getting them ready for transport. Um, then do some organization on the uh, digital data we've collected so far, and then. There'll be a lot of different <laughs> analysis going on for quite uh, a long time, probably years, to work up all the data that's been collected for this expedition. I'll, um, we'll, uh, you know, some of us will be sitting down and going back through all the video and annotating it. Um, that'll be part of, I'll be part of that team, um, looking through, trying to see exactly what we saw, count the number of individuals of everything, um, and work that out in order to do kind of an abundance and biodiversity across space uh, assessment. And then other people will be d diving into doing uh, deep, detailed analysis, looking at the physical specimens we collected, uh, as including all the um, <coughs> sediment and looking at the microfauna and the macrofauna in the sediment, 
uh, and then working up um, environmental DNA profiles from the water bottle collections. So we've got researchers from multiple countries all over the globe all participating in this expedition and it'll take all of us in our respective labs um, years probably to work up all the data from this expedition on the first pass and then the um, archives, the samples and the video will be archived for much longer periods of time as well. Looks like we've got a coral here. Actually, not probably another lace coral, but there's part of me that wants to say it's an elapsamia as well, which I'm struggling with. Yeah, this is actually an elapsamia. So it's our first colonial sclerotinia of the dive. It's our first sclerotinia of the dive. I haven't seen a cup coral yet either. All right, I think that's all I need, thanks. Juliana, when's the next ROV cruise for y'all? It is May. That's May. Yeah, fish. Yeah. And uh, so the fish. Do we have time to do a nice long visit? Do we lose the fish? Fish. 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 I'm okay with this one. <laughs> yeah, we want, <laughs> I'd, just, I'd yeah. like to look at both, but this Hylanema? Yeah, I didn't see the fish. I only saw this That's fine. Is this Hylanema, Maxi? Yeah, it's yeah. like a Hylanema. That's the first one I've seen in a while. The... Yeah, we'd like to collect this, please. Yeah? Yeah. No, this will probably be a small bio box. Just it's a stalk, and so if you just clip the stalk and put the whole thing into one of the um, bio box ones. Is the stalk pretty brittle? Like I can get it with just the fingertips? Or no, you'll you probably need to cut it. it. Okay. It's not really brittle at all. And it may actually just pop off the bottom. Might be your best thing is to grab it by the stalk and just pull more than even try and cut. Yep, you're free. And if we could get a glamour shot of it before we stick it in the box.
Yeah, it's got an amphipod and um, some, I don't, not sure what I'm looking at. Something looks like a brittle star there, but I'm not sure if it's What's the bottom right? The left another amphipod? I think it's another amphipod, yeah. Little red beady eyes. Mm. Okay, that's good for us. Stick in the box. Let's go. is fine. We snagged that squat lobster that's out in the open. Two is fine. Two's fine. Yep. Yeah. On. Oh. So close. And, and yep. And he's, he's okay. um, so two things before you put that away. I thought I saw a second one about a, a meter up, but um, and then there's a solitary hydroid. If we can take a quick look at that before we fly away. Actually, it might not be a solitary hydroid. It might be that narcomedusi thing. Yeah, it actually is that we saw yesterday. see the reflection of the vehicle's lights coming off of it. Uh, no, I don't think that'll survive, even suction. Um, 
we, we should leave that. But let's hop up and see. I think there was a second squat lobster here. Where was that other one? Just there. Oh, that's what I was looking at. But that's actually a dandelion, so not a squat lobster. All right, we can, we can clean up. These are one of my favorite deep sea creatures. This is a type of siphonophore um, called a dandelion siphonophore. It's a benthic siphonophore. It basically sticks to the bottom based on its tentacles um, and just waits for things to swim by and capture it. Um, but just like their midwater cousins, um, but these are almost always, they're always attached to the seafloor. Um, makes me think of War of the Worlds every time I see one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we can we can actively hunt um, squat lobsters. Get them in the in the jars before we get too much shallower. Another dandelion. Up oh, at yeah. Zoom Urchin, please. Do you want? Okay. Yeah, no, that's not, yeah. <laughs> Let's not waste our time on that one. Looking for nice dumb squat lobsters out in the open. Ah, yeah, I missed that one. Go for it. There's two. Right. Perfect. Right. Back them up. Switch it. Switch it. I said rack them up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Suck them up works too. Jump them up. <laughs> Jar? Y'all are getting good at that.
hopefully you know. They look snail, please. Yeah. Yeah. Now we go to the other side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are different. Oh, no. Right? Yes. Can we collect the, the fish? A fish? There's yeah. a fish? No, it's... Ah, that fish? Uh, yeah, yeah, that fish. Okay. Suction or that? Suction. Uh, Interesting. It's like a pretty close one. Oh, we can get that one now on this topography, so... Yeah, whatever you think has the highest likelihood of success. Yeah. Right, suction is on. Moxie, is the one on the right the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This guy's reversing in. Just come on. How you doing? Nice. Seen Finding Nemo. Now another one's coming out. You found a hole very deep under that rock, or still no. swimming against the current. Yeah, I, I, I kind of did too, but has not arrived in the jar yet. We'll get tired So I see some commentary in the chat about whale falls and, and whale fall hotspots, and there actually is um, some, some colleagues at Scripps have been doing some work off the Southern California coast, and they have seen um, a, a, a much higher incidence of whale falls in that area right along the gray whale migration paths. Um, 
so there's at least one spot that they know there's a lot more whale falls than you see elsewhere in the world. Then also we've been lucky enough to see very little garbage out here, um, but we're in an area that's um, kind of so remote. Um, <coughs> but at the same point we were working in the South Pacific garbage patch, so definitely on the beaches of Easter Island you see lots and lots of, um, of um, garbage washing ashore in Rapa Nui. Um, and most of the seafloor garbage we saw was nearer there, but that has more to do with the oceanographic processes concentrating garbage in that area than it does. The garbage is not local to Rapa Nui, but now we move, or as we move further east, um, we're getting out of the center of the gyre, more into some currenty areas. Um, but <coughs> Diva Amon and Randy Rogen and I and, a, and several other colleagues did an analysis of uh, deep sea garbage across the Pacific a few years ago and really, uh, shockingly, not at all um, the greatest indicator of um, likelihood of seeing marine debris on the seafloor was based on uh, just proximity to land. Oh, look at that. Stoloniferous coral. Oh, not stolen. Um, yeah, stoloniferous um, coral look at, hiding under that overhang. Fish is somewhere. Ah, oh, there's this. Fish is now in. Two and three of all occupied. Can I play with the camera while you're messing with that? It upwards. Some brachiopods here as well. Two squat, two well hidden squat lobsters in there. Not good targets. Right. That's good, thanks. before we get too far along. Caryophyllid cup coral. 
It's the first one I've seen on this dive. Alright, that's all I need, thanks. Let's make some tracks. like a partially eaten sea star. Yeah. Or lost. Just in a hole. So maybe. Alright. No, maybe it's in a hole. Okay. So much for making tracks. Whatever the smallest thing you can fit it in reliably. Eleven's occupied. Yep, nine and ten are open. right there. Nothing, there's nothing magical about the waypoints, really. I mean, if we're plus or minus 30, 40 meters, whatever. A couple heterocarpus shrimp. I think of these things in my head as armored shrimp. That's just totally my own name for them, but they just look like something out of Mad Max with their mohawks and armor. Several more squat lobsters, but all well into cracks. Actually, that coral, sorry, that we just flew over, that I didn't recognize quick enough that it was pink. That's all I needed. Thanks. So that's our first hemicralium of the dive. The sediment load on this seamount is definitely higher than uh, what we've seen over the last couple dives, which again doesn't really surprise me too much as we've been moving east along the Salas y Gomez um, seamount chain. As, as we move further east, we get more into 
more productive waters. Um, we're still very much in oligotrophic waters out here, um, but I'm not at all surprised to see the sediment increase in the further east we travel. Another grunch of stolen at first coral there. in the top. There'd be better visibility and I can see two walls at once. So we've got a, a good little stand of stoloniferous coral here and one solitary cup coral. Great, right, let's keep going. Thanks. I'm trying to make up some cover some ground and make sure we have the time for day shift to play up in the mesophotic. Well, that's a really hard question here, actually. If I were to give you the textbook answer, I'd say 200 meters. Um, but the water is so clear around here, we've been seeing um, photosynthesis clearly occurring as deep as 380 meters. Um, so the mesophotic is basically any depth below like a shallow water coral reef, you can still have photosynthesis occurring. Um, and around here, this it's quite, quite deeper um, than what we would um, expect to see pretty much anywhere else in the world. Uh, the eel, it's fine, the eel. I was shocked to find uh, crustus coral and algae at 260 meters um, in around Howland and Baker Islands and on the equator and to see it down 380 meters here is just mind-blowing. This is a plug nose eel, or nose plug eel. Um, all right, thank you. type of sponge but I'm not recognizing it. Can you close the iris a little bit so we can see the texture of it? Does this camera have an iris or you just mess with the ISO? Okay. Yeah, 
Is that right? Yeah. Do you want to collect this or? Yeah. Yeah, let's grab this. You can reach it for this. Yeah. Uh, if bit. it'll fit, but that looks big to me. Okay. We'll see, it'll probably tear um, when you grab it, and so let's see how big a piece tears off. I'm not sure, I don't, don't think it'll come whole. Pop off. Well, when when it comes to figuring out what sponge species are, the the, the overall structure isn't as important as the spicules, and so getting. Um, the fact that it crushed isn't going to bother us too much in the identification process. Generally, we end up dissolving a lot of the tissue with bleach and things like that to get the um, spicules out. Cool, thanks. If you think it'll fit in the quiver, great. If not, B1C or B1D are open. Excellent.
go check the big one out. Ooh, how pretty. It's a little different than what I've ever seen before. Yeah, beautiful. This is some type of siphonophore. No idea what to call it beyond that. But wow, it is gorgeous. I've never seen one quite like this before. It's the closest relative most people would know to this one is a Portuguese man of war. Uh, is also a siphonophore. Yep, these are very, very stingy. Sometimes if you're recovering um, long line or you know, working a cable or something that's been in the deep sea, you know, the tentacles will get wrapped up and you'll get stung just handling the rope or whatever that's come out. That one top piece looks like an eye. is almost creepy. I feel like it's, the Cyclops is staring at us. Yeah. A truly, truly alien looking form of life. Ha, NASA, we found aliens here. As we were watching, it's been extending its it's extending its tentacles. As we were watching it, we first saw it; it had them all tightened up, and now it seems to be dropping them out. I bet it made contact with the seafloor and realized it was close to the bottom, and so it pulled up all its feeding tentacles. And now, as it moves off, it's slowly extending them away again. Not the, like... Like the top weird ones? Yeah, the top weird ones probably are some kind of locomotion would be my guess. So these things are weird in that they're colonial clones. So we're actually looking at many individual organisms that have some specialization, but they are in their own way, their own organi organisms. Something I have to admit I've never quite understood the physiology of, but... Um, Really fascinating. This is beautiful. Feeding tentacles are huge. Oh, now you want the lasers on? I mean, that's that's meters. Certainly, well over a meter, approaching probably yeah, at least a meter. So the the green the green little dots are ten centimeters, but they're reflecting on the rock behind it. So they're it's giving you a little bit of an abnormal uh, skewed perspective but certainly a meter, a meter and a half. This is so cool. Nothing beats it when it comes to jelly. It's pretty much everything beats it when it comes This is in a No, this is the lowest. The last one was. The last one was.
Uh, we can continue on, yep. It's kind of mesmerizing, yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> We'll send some frame grabs to um, a colleague in Japan um, who knows all things Midwater and get an ID from him. Yeah. All right, science is happy when outreach is happy. Outreach is happy. All right, well, we will let this go on its merry way and continue our transect up. up with this stuff so quickly <laughs> <laughs> sorry no no sorry i'm just impressed we get an ID, huh? it's a family level yeah <laughs> do they all have that weird eye thing huh? do they all have that weird eye no at least um uh, yeah, i don't know the name it's like um floating yeah organ oh it's for a joint yeah that's this Whoa. is it. Like a corn master. Corn master? Yeah, corn master. But it's very weird and impressive, but no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, do we need to collect it? No? Okay. No. We got one of these. We, we've already got a voucher specimen for the region. I think you can track your record for it. 
<laughs> well, in that case, we need to sit down and do some sampling. I do want to take a good look at that, though, please. And probably going to sample this. So this is a primnoid trying to figure out the uh, right, so this is a primnoid probably norella as the genus and it's got a parasitic zoanthin growing on it as well um, we would, I would like to collect some of this, please. Both the zoanthid and the coral itself. Yep. That's already cool, okay. Yeah, if you don't mind. It's just doing another one out of our summit. These are white corals, so if you want a white balance on this, that's fine too. If you, once you get a little closer. Press the button. Press the button. You can push it just as easy as like. But I would get a little closer before if you're going to. Let's see. I have a, a bad reputation for white balance. At the worst time. Or the best. No, never the best. I'm just saying that clip made a lot of press. The one that was like the second one was way too long. Oops. 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 So the part we're going to want to collect is the left side, which I know is a little on the frustrating okay, side. So but yeah. yeah. Well, if that's the case, we'll go around this side. So yep. I think I'm there. I must be pivoting on a rock up there because it's not like it's sitting yep. All right, well, that's probably good enough. Um, we can get a glamour shot of it as we pull it up. But there's uh, we want both the zoanthid and piece of the coral, which is over here. So that's the zoanthid there, and then that's the base coral, and I want both of them. Yeah, the pond doesn't like being that low. Yeah, it keeps coming back to itself. So what do I do? I don't know. Do I try and just do a white balance here? Oh, no. I think that's less great. I thought it was better. A little bit.
Asking me, I don't care. Yeah. Whatever. No, no, no. Uh, I think he's open. Yeah, it is open. It is good enough, and then. Yeah, this the spot with the fatter one. I mean, if, 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 yeah, I mean, if you want to take all of that, that's fine with me. I think you just take from that stock down. You can just get one thing and get in. This is going to take up all. 
Let me get a, a tight up on the polyps before you put it in, please. Thanks. All right. Let's put it in the quiver and continue on. That's okay. Can we confirm? Yeah. On what's it upwards? Thank you.
so as we're moving up here, we're crossing 670 meters and we're starting to pick up more um, corals. Let's go check out all of the life living on that one. This is another primnoid um, with a whole bunch of ophiocanthid brittle stars living on it. A couple squat lobsters as well. We collected one uh, coral very similar to this with the same style uh, brittle stars yesterday. That's actually good enough. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure that's what we collected yesterday. So we can continue on. kind of gotten up on now we're on a little bit of a different um, ridge we're actually on like a ridge back that a little bit different angle um, moving along here and we're suddenly picking up more corals another primnoid this one's got some hydroids living on it you can actually see how much the currents picked up that vibration on the top of the corals the water moving around it Keep on the lookout for squat lobsters. However, this very kind of craggy terrain is not good squat lobster collecting territory. They have lots of places to hide. Take a close look at both of these, please. This is so cool. This is likely um, an Acanthogorgia with a hermit crab with an anemone. All right, and then we look at the likely corallid next to it. This is a corallid or, or white morph hemicorallid. Again, I'm pretty sure we collected this yesterday as well. All right, thanks. Some old forayed stun sponge skeletons. Another little purple coral hiding in there. Thanks. I have an ongoing fascination by why filter feeders hide underneath overhangs. I have a couple hypotheses, but um, it still strikes me as interesting. All right, let's snag the out in the open big squat lobster. Actually, no, that's too big, isn't it? That's not going to be easily slurpable. Yep, never mind. I don't want to. Don't want to run the risk of getting one jammed in the, in the, um, thing. that's a different crinoid though. We have not seen that crinoid yet. Little hydroids hiding under here as well. Snail? What snail? I don't even see these snails. Like uh, I'm just I do no, not. It's under the um, the crinoid. Under the crinoid. Sorry. Down, down, down. I just like <laughs> don't have a search image for all these snails. Know, 
down? Yeah, down. That one. Ah. That one. What did you Thank see? you about that. I totally didn't see that one either. <laughs> Let's suction sample the snail, and then if there's any squat lobsters, try and get them too. Yep, that works. You, you have to get the hyper venomous fish out of the bio out of the slip jar if you get it. <laughs> Squat lobsters. Two or three of uh, flying around with a camera okay. if you want, mate. Yeah. There Distracted by these again. So cool. Yeah, so pretty. I need to do some research to better understand what they are in their life cycle. No squat lobsters at all. No, well, since we're already stable, I'd like to collect the, the um, cup coral too. Is that yeah. too far away or you're going to have to hop forward? Suction? Yeah, suction. We can also keep our eye out for one that's uh, a little bit easier access if that one's going to be hard. Somebody with legs. All right, let's move on.
All right, let's keep going. Another heavy Kralium here. It looks like as we work just along, let's, if we can, just let's hover just to the left side of this ridge line because I think all the corals are going to be either just on the side or just on the top. So the current is flow. Current appears to be coming up from our left, up the slope, and then topping over um, this ridge. shot of the semi corallium with its um, associated um, brittle stars, a couple very small squat lobsters here as well. So it's got a, some hydroids, something overgrowing it, but I'm Good look at that, please. So the question here is, is the urchin eating the coral? My PhD advisor um, at Boston University has been leading a multi-year effort to try and understand coral predation in the deep sea, and so I'm particularly interested to know um, if this urchin is munging on this coral. And I want to say yes, but it's really hard to tell. Target is the snails that are living on it. Yep. Right. Um, then.
and let's try and get the whole package, the yeah. coral skeleton, <laughs> the anemone, <laughs> and <laughs> the snails on it. So. I'm not quite sure what this coral is. It's on. Yeah. I'm assuming it's going to be on the brittle side. Uh, river biobox probably. Yeah, d definitely big biobox. I'm actually wondering if if this might be better off with the scoop and try and get everything into the metal scoop because that, that coral might be very brittle. Mm. You know what might work is we can put the scoop in the port arm, hand it off to the port arm, and then just knock it into it. Yeah. Because. The scoop itself is not going to sit on a nice yeah. and loving yeah. Well, whatever, whatever you think is best, yeah. go for it. But we want the whole little mini ecosystem, and I expect the coral is going to be on the brittle side. You know the scientists are pushing unreasonable requests when both arms come out.
think I'm hard up against the clip there. You are. Go right and go to the I'm not going to behind that first time. Or, sorry. I'm having trouble telling what it is, but yeah, my assumption is it's going to be on the brittle side. Whatever's easiest for you. Yeah, two A or B, take your pick. We're getting so so complicated. We've got pilots standing and running around and reaching off each other, taking the uh, intricate dance of collecting to a whole new level. and has decided it likes the scoop. If you need to just put the, the scoop back in the rock box, we can just roll the dice on whether the urchin will stay in it until we get to the surface. It's coming? Yeah. There it goes. X. Uh, awesome. Great job, guys. been a pleasure going narrating this expedition for you. I'll sign off for the last time and wish you a good rest of your day.
Ito. Handy. The ducks. Oh, yeah, I can rack everyone, Maxi here. I hope you all doing well. And uh, welcome to the final dive of this campaign and uh, to my final watch final watch. In short, um, this expedition has explored never before seen environment, deep unknown area, and we have observed mesophotic sun and with, uh, with diverse life. One of the highlights of this campaign was the discovery of the of a deeper assemblage of Leptoceris coral at 197 meters. And additionally, we observed a difference in geomorphology between the Nazca and Celestico Messimon. And today, our objective is to explore um, the unnamed Gujok number two. And this transit is located on the eastern flank of the of an unexplored and unregistered sea one that is located within the national jurisdiction of Chile, uh, east of Motomotiro Hiva. The dive will start maybe at 900 meter depth and go slow to summit to 200 meters. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Maxi aquí. Espero que todos estén bien. Eh, bienvenidos todos y todas a la última inmersión de la presente campaña y mi última guardia en lo que es esta inmersión. Eh, como resumen de esta expedición, eh, hemos explorado zonas que nunca han sido vistas en, en ambientes los cuales eran desconocidos aún para la ciencia en zonas profundas a las cuales aún siguen siendo inexploradas y uno de, nuestra, de nuestros eventos destacados, por decirlo así, dentro de esta presente campaña fue descubrir o, o registrar eh, ensambles de coral leptoceris a 197 metros lo cual son 20 metros más de lo reportado anteriormente para zonas mesofóticas asimismo, eh, a lo largo de estas campañas a lo, de estas campañas, tanto la de enero como de febrero, la cual es la que vamos a finalizar eh, en el presente mes, es la, la diferencia que existe entre la geomorfología entre los montes submarinos de la cordillera de Nazca y la cordillera de Sala Gómez. Como he dicho en reiteradas ocasiones, principalmente la geomorfología diferencia que en los montes de Nazca predominan las estructuras rocosas y en los montes de Sala Gómez predominan estructuras rocosas y depósitos sedimentarios mayormente. Hoy eh, nuestro transecto está localizado al este de, de un lugar inexplorado y, no, y un monte no registrado, el cual está dentro de la jurisdicción, dentro de las aguas dentro de la jurisdicción chilena, al este de Motumotiro Jiva. Este transecto comenzó a los 900 metros de profundidad y nuestro objetivo es tratar 
de llegar hacia los 200 metros de profundidad dentro de lo posible. Asimismo, recordar de lo que eh, comenzamos a ver al principio de la presente inmersión, comenzamos dentro de, una, de un sector de eh, áreas que fueron de depósitos sedimentarios, siguiendo al seguir subiendo la presente cima, de la ladera, la, la, eh, disculpen, del presente monte submarino, estamos observando lo que son estructuras eh, rocosas, las cuales hemos tenido principalmente acantilados, los cuales son escarpados, con grandes paredones de roca, en la cual predominan fauna tal como pequeños corales y algunos, algunas esponjas. And here in Mission Control, we have uh, also uh, marine biologists, scientists, engineers, uh, marine biologist students. Um, Marisa, feel free to introduce yourself, please. Now we are observing a cute octopus, maybe Skyrgus genus. Y ahora na corua ta toa, la anui corua, po anui corua. Muy buenos días, muy buenas tardes o muy buenas noches, dependiendo de dónde nos estén viendo y escuchando. Bueno, les quiero comentar. Mi nombre es Emilia. Soy bióloga marina. Estoy muy agradecida de esta hermosa experiencia que me ha permitido eh, ser parte de estas exploraciones de los montes submarinos que abarcan la cordillera de Salas y Gómez y también algunos sectores eh, que están alrededor de la Panuy en el cual se han encontrado especies y registros de especies que no, no estaban como descritas para la zona así que para mí es, es un agrado y, y estoy súper agradecida con todo y espero que disfruten nuestra última inversión y que salgan muchas especies y hábitats mesofóticos extraordinarios y nos maravillen en el último video de este dive. Muchas gracias y Orana Corúa, Maururu. Hola, buenas noches. Aquí Ariana Mecho del Centro de Supercomputación de Barcelona y al igual que mis compañeros, me despido en este último dive y muy agradecida de haber podido participar en, en esta campaña. Thank you guys. <laughs> uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jan Maximiliano Fernando Tapia Guerra, but you can call me Maxi. And I'm a marine biologist and PhD, PhD student of Chile. And my tasks here on board are support with the identification of the ventic habitat and the ventic um, invertebrate of these uh, remote areas. Hola, ¿qué tal? Como señalaba anteriormente, eh, dejar presentar.
No, this is low, low for you, this. Yeah, it's okay. I tried to find the, the mail, but... <laughs> um, hello, that, that is not um, a flatfish. This is a goosefish. Um, Maybe um, Lophoides genus. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> okay, continuando como antes que me, inter me interrumpiera este pez. Eh, principalmente presentarme. Mi nombre es Jan Maximiliano Fernando Tapia Guerra, pero pueden decirme Maxi. Eh, soy biólogo marino y estudiante de doctorado de la Universidad Católica del Norte de Chile. Y mi, dentro de mis, mis tareas a bordo es principalmente apoyar con la identificación de la fauna bentónica y caracterizar los hábitats bentónicos de estas áreas remotas. Hace poco, eh, lo que estábamos viendo en, en pantalla era un, un lofiforme eh, del género posiblemente eh, lofoides. Y en este momento estamos viendo, este es nuestro segundo pulpo en la presente inmersión. And now we are observing um, the second octopus in this, in this dive. Sí, se podría colectar este con con red. Sí, lo puedo probar. Ya. Eh, ¿cómo colecta? With the net. Or where you stop in here. Oh, we can try. Ya. ¿Qué te dijo papá? And it's important to say that, or I like to remind you, that the the old specimen collected will be uh, preserved in the Sala de Colecciones Biológica at the Universidad Católica Norte de Chile and the Natural History Museum of Chile, serving as a, a legacy for future scientists of Chile.
Como decía, es importante reiterar y recordar que los organismos que, han, que se han colectado de la presente campaña eh, serán depositados en dependencia de salas de colecciones biológicas de la Universidad Católica del Norte y además en el Museo de Historia Natural de Chile, sirviendo como un legado para futuras generaciones de científicos. En este momento se está intentando colectar un pulpo con el sistema de red. Eh, debemos recordar que estos animales eh, son importantes colectar para saber eh, estructuras y tener una, mayor, una mejor identificación de los presentes animales y así tener eh, mejores planes de protección para el área y los organismos de los cuales viven en estos montes submarinos. But it's no, it's difficult to catch it. No, don't worry. Yeah, he doesn't. He's not really okay, no problem. He's like, you know, yeah, fish. yeah. No, no, no problem. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Another day living in that cell. Simon. <laughs> Considerando la topografía de la, y la complejidad del, del, del terreno, de la, de la presente estructura rocosa, la, la, la red no, no pudo colectar el presente pulpo, por lo cual eh, se aborta la, lo que es la, la colecta del presente organismo. Recordar también que el, el equipo de Sebastián presenta distintos tipos de herramientas para colectar y de almacenaje, distintos tipos de, de contenedores tipo caja, las cuales podemos ver que son las BB2A o las BB2B, y los tubos que se encuentran en la zona media que son los coral quiver, los cuales sirven para conectar corales o organismos que, cabe, que, que quepan dentro del, del presente um, contenedor. Asimismo también, como empezamos nuestra inmersión, colectando también, tiene colect eh, recipientes para colectar eh, sedimentos, los cuales se son denominados puscor o testigos. ¿Y en francés son? Cagot. Y en francés me señala Ari que es cagot. El correr. El correr. <ríe> ¿Es erizo, Ari? No. Uh -huh. Thank you, guys. Yeah, keep going. 
dentro de los organismos colectados o de los organismos que hemos visto que es que um, nos llama la atención hace un par de horas atrás eh, observamos un un sifonóforo bentónico el cual eh, gran parte de la información de estos organismos es desconocida solo eh, sabiendo o teniendo información de, a nivel de familia dentro del, de la familia del presente sifonóforo que observamos eh, es de la familia Rodalide, el cual se caracteriza por tener una estructura central rellena de tentáculos y los cuales presenta proyecciones las cuales se aferran a las rocas los cuales permiten cazar y alimentarse Asimismo, una de las cosas importantes que nos entrega la, la presente topografía es que a mayor complejidad y heterogeneidad ambiental vamos a observar una mayor diversidad y riqueza en esta zona. Recordar que los montes submarinos son bastante diversos, no solo entre montes, no solo pueden variar entre estructuras eh, o ecosistemas, por ejemplo, entre, mont entre la, misma, en la misma cordillera, sino que también pueden variar en el mismo monte mostrando un patrón, un patrón batimétrico, perdón, el cual puede ser diverso desde la base, la, la ladera y la cima, encontrando más de un tipo de ambiente, los cuales pueden ser propicios para distintos tipos de, de organismos y por ende el que esté adaptado para vivir en, ese cierto, en este tipo de, de, de ambiente va a poder solo vivir allí. Por ende, esta, esta cualidad única, eh, nos provee a nosotros distintos tipos de información para saber qué tipo de fauna podemos hallar en estas zonas tan complejas. En este momento estamos observando una anguila de la familia Netastomatide. Una de las características principales de, este, de esta familia es que tienen su cabeza alargada, y por lo general es mucho más pequeña que el tamaño de su cola. Teniendo también gran parte de su, de su, de su boca con una proyección la cual le da un aspecto alargado. And now we are observing a netastomid eel, but it's a cute animal and The characteristic of this animal is his mouth that is very large and he says his head is very small. Así mismo como observado y señalaban anteriormente, las microestructuras y la topografía del sector brindan eh, refugio y zonas de alimentación y crianza para distintos organismos. Como lo podemos observar ahora, los presentes peces escorpiones se encuentran eh, posados en, en la roca, seguros en zonas a las cuales tienen refugio y quizás también zonas para cazar y no ser cazados. Dentro de nuestro viaje a partir de la cordillera de Salas y Gómez, hemos observado distintos tipos de ambiente, los cuales varían muchísimo alrededor de la presente, de la presente cordillera, encontrando montes submarinos con, con ambientes mesofóticos cercanos al sector de Motumotirojiva, los cuales nos han sorprendido principalmente por la cantidad de algas, algas coralinas, coral leptoceris y una gran diversidad, riqueza y biomasa asociados a sus cimas. Se fue el peso. No problema. 
Ah, really? ¿Dónde? Ah, ¿es un minuto? Ya, no, no, ya. Pues sí, tiene toda la venta. No, no es una esponja. Sí, una esponja. No. Come and collect the, the snail. That beauter. Not that one. The down of the that thing. Yeah. It's a large head. That one. Seritide, posiblemente. Sí. Can you submit before to <laughs> snoop? Okay. Not again? Yeah, okay. I'm happy, I'm happy with that. Cuatro. Yeah. <coughs> una de las cosas que, que debemos hacer cada vez que se hace una colección de organismos con succión es esperar a que el organismo eh, esté dentro del contenedor en el cual va a ser transportado a bordo debido a que principalmente en ocasiones puede quedar atrapado en la manguera.
Hunger. Sorry guys, I did a quick zoom of, of that. Only a quick zoom. Yeah, only a quick zoom. Okay, it's a sponge. Thank you. Yeah? No, no, era una casi loco. Así mismo una de las cosas que cuando se, se está en misión control, principalmente nosotros contamos con distintos expertos apoyándonos para la identificación de la fauna y asimismo para la, para la correcta eh, eh, identificación y etiquetas de los organismos debidos que cuando estos son colectados eh, quedan en, en ciertos contenedores los cuales para no perder la muestra o no perder el, el lugar de donde fue colectado tanto la profundidad como el sitio se tiene que anotar eh, en, un, en una planilla por ende más de una persona se encuentra trabajando aquí en Misión Control de hecho hace poco se presentaron eh, expertos que están trabajando junto a nosotros para poder eh, tener de mejor manera etiquetadas las muestras y saber a qué organismo corresponde y si esta es o no una especie nueva. Asimismo, tal como hay expertos a, de distintos tipos de materia, en decir, distintos tipos especializados en distintos tipos de organismos, sean moluscos, crustáceos, erizos, estrellas, peces, también en el presente, en el presente barco se encuentran a bordo distintos tipos de científicos de distintas nacionalidades, en los cuales hablan inglés, español, francés y catalán, los cual, lo, por lo cual la presente transmisión será relatada en distintos idiomas para que todos sean partícipes de esta expedición. Tal como dije al principio, nuestro objetivo es eh, alcanzar la cima del presente monte submarino, del presente Guyot a 200 metros de profundidad de momento estamos en camino a ello estamos aproximadamente a una profundidad de 600 metros 630 aproximada, aproximadamente lo cual aún nos queda eh, harto camino que recorrer pero nuestra transmisión será eh, finalizará a eso de las 5 de la tarde por lo cual tendremos tiempo para poder llegar y cumplir nuestro objetivo de explorar gran parte de este monte submarino. Asimismo, reiterar que este monte submarino eh, no posee nombre aún y tampoco está, no tiene un nombre registrado y asimismo, por ende, es inexplorado y todo lo que observemos en la presente inmersión es, es la primera vez que se está observando y viendo la, la luz eh, o mostrándose hacia el mundo. Asimismo, recalcar la importancia de, la, de las estructuras coralinas o los corales, tanto los que vemos ahora, estos corales telares, o las esponjas, es principalmente que proveen de refugio y zona de alimentación para otros organismos. Asimismo, como vimos en hace un par de segundos o minutos, unas estrellas frágiles las cuales están viviendo sobre estos corales y asimismo ellos brindan mayor complejidad y heterogeneidad al hábitat. La importancia de las especies formadoras de hábitat eh, radica principalmente es que ellas proveen mayor heterogeneidad, es decir, que dan mayor eh, espacio y lugares para poder vivir para otros organismos, lo cual son aprovechados por pequeños organismos para tener una zona para cazar y no ser cazados, tener zonas de crianza 
y asimismo zonas de descanso. La importancia de, la, de estas especies que, que forman hábitat, que valga la redundancia, se conocen como especies formadoras de hábitat, son importantes estudiar debido a que ellas nos indican si estos hábitats son vulnerables a cualquier tipo de presión, tanto sea antrópica como natural. Cuando me refiero a presiones antrópicas puede ser principalmente minería submarina, sobrepesca o basura marina. Dentro del natural y cambio climático, como señala Ari. Gracias, Ari. Sí, hay que verlo. ¿Dónde? Ah, sí, un nudi, un nudi rank. I need the closer to nudi rank first, and after that of the the coral. Tritonia, sí, Tritonide. Now we are serving the first nudie rank of this dive. And maybe we're trying to collect it. <laughs> we can... No, can we can we get that. Yeah? Okay. With suction, okay. Uh, no, in the, in the um, jar number five, it's okay. Como señalaba anteriormente, ahora estamos observando uno de los primeros nudibranquios que, que aparecieron en la presente inmersión, el primero de la, de la última inmersión, eh, posiblemente del género Tritonia, familia Tritonide. Una de las características de la familia Tritonide son los rinóforos o esas estructuras que sobresalen de la, de la pared corporal, que son estructuras las cuales utilizan para autodefensa. Una de las características de los nudibranquios principalmente que lo que comen lo transforman en una autodefensa. Me explico. Principalmente ellos comen nidarios o comen eh, corales o algún tipo de, de organismo con células urticantes. Ellos lo consumen, lo procesan y quedan almacenados en estas estructuras denominadas ceratos. Piece of coral. Piece of coral. Yeah. Um, now we are serving the, the yellow coral. It's a Acanthogorgia coral. El coral que vemos hace poco es del género Acanthogorgia. El coral amarillo que ahora intentaremos colectar. Ah, 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. Nothing intended. Okay, then it's okay. Yeah. Quarrel, quiver. I'm sorry. Anywhere in particular? Or, or uh, with Branchy, here. This part is okay, or that one. Th I think this is easy. Yeah, Take out this part. One. Or, ah, no, that one. This part is okay. Sorry. No. But you have the rock here, but I think it's more easy taking. Thank you so much for that beautiful sum. <laughs> Sorry, that I need a quick zoom yeah. of the uh, fish. Uh, fish. Yeah, only quick zoom. Ahora voy a ver. Parece en su mía, o algo así. No puedo verlo bien. Sí. Un poco la rincus. No tiene punta. Macrurides, déjalo como Macrurides. Sí, está complicado. Que se dé vuelta. Eh, date, date. Gira, gira. Gira. Yeah, they need that. <laughs> that the the fish side. turn off to the get side. Out. Yeah. Sí, voy a hacer un. Ese es tu ori. No, no, no. Madurido nomás. Después veo que es. Thank you. And.
En ese momento estábamos viendo un pez eh, de la familia Macruide o perteneciente a los pejerratas. Eh, lo complicado de los pejerratas es que mm, su identificación es bastante complicada debido a que tienen ciertas características que deben verse para poder decidir entre un género u otro. Por lo cual recién tenemos la discusión de qué género podría ser. Así que más adelante se deberán analizar las imágenes más a detalle para determinar si es un Nesumia, un Colorincus o otro, cualquier género de la presente familia, la cual es muy diversa. ¿Un campo de polio bobón? Sí. ¿Estamos a 600 ya? ¿Está? ¿What? ¿Hay una... ¿Good soon of that? ¿Es un snail? Ah, es un snail. the same snail we collected before. Sí. ¿Qué pasó? Dentro de los patrones que hemos observado, eh, batimétricos entre los montes submarinos, principalmente va desde los montes que hemos explorado en el sector de Nazca, que fueron desde profundidades de mil, de mil metros hasta las cimas de 400 o 500 metros, a diferencia de estos montes que recorríamos profundidades de 900 o 700 metros hacia profundidades mucho más someras de 100 metros, que fue el último monte submarino. Una de las curiosidades principalmente es que en estos montes submarinos encontramos distintos patrones, los cuales están, están dados por la presencia de peces, los cuales ciertos peces con forma de anguila son dominantes en los estratos más profundos, desde mil metros hacia abajo, llegando a una zona media donde encontramos peces, eh, peces rata, los macruridos que observamos hace poco. Asimismo, eh, ya una profundidad desde los 400 metros hacia arriba o incluso desde los 350 o 200 metros de profundidad podemos encontrar los peces ya más típicos, peces fusiformes o por decir una forma más, eh, más banal peces con forma de peces o típicos peces que nosotros conocemos asimismo peces con distintos tipos de colores más coloridos y distintos tipos de forma una de las cosas más curiosas que se pudieron encontrar dentro de las inversiones anteriores fueron los, estos peces picaflores que aún no se sabe si corresponden al mim, a la misma especie de, de pez eh, picaflor que se halla en Juan Fernández, no topo con Fernandesianus, o si es una especie nueva o una especie distinta de más del sector del Indo-Pacífico. Asimismo, uno de, la, de los highlights del presente, de los, disculpen, de las anteriores eh, 
inmersiones cuando se hizo un dive a, la, a 200 metros de profundidad fue hallar un, un pez piña en, a una profundidad de 280 metros o 200 metros en el monte sin nombre número 3. Lo cual es bastante curioso debido a que este pez solo hemos, lo hemos observado en el sector de Nazca Desventuradas y en el archipiélago de Juan Fernández. Uh, now we are serving a blue, uh, blue big eyes uh, fish. This is a uh, epigonus. It's a beautiful fish, and this color um, is a uh, iridescent blue, but it's very interesting. Ahora vemos un pez del género epigonus, de color azul intenso, posiblemente por iridescencia. Y su nombre común es Ojudo Azul. Thank you. <laughs> Se llama así, Ojudo. <laughs> A ver, es como la palabra salmonete, a mí igual me da risa. Sí. <laughs> Pueden ser el exterior. ¿Crees que lleguemos a... hacia um, los 300, 400 metros? Porque lleguemos con... Ah, bien. Sí, vamos en el waypoint, vamos llegando al waypoint, vamos, estamos en medio entre el waypoint 5 y el 4. El que llegaremos a los 200. Por ejemplo, el waypoint 4 tenemos que llegar a las 6 y media y llegamos a las 5 de este sitio. Vamos cumpliendo. Ah, ahí está. Hola, la quick sumo. Y ahora vemos uno de estos camarones que hace unas inmersiones atrás, la cual nos encontramos uno de estos camarones comiendo un ictófido, lo cual fue el evento de la noche, narrado por Brian. Así que ahí fue, le recomiendo ver esa, esa transmisión y ver cómo este lindo camarón es un voraz <ríe> organismo. Yeah, thank you. Um, now we are serving on the rock, uh, attached on the rock, uh, different shell, maybe uh, spondylus fossil shells. Thank <laughs> you. 
De momento la, la, la presenta zona parece verse deshabitada, no obstante, recordar que entre medio de las rocas u cuevas que se forman de la topografía del, de la presente roca, se pueden hallar organismos más pequeños los cuales pueden vivir escondidos, que pueden eh, esconderse principalmente de la presencia del rock o la vista de nosotros, es por ende lo cual puede lucir un poco deshabitado. Recordemos que los organismos tienen distintos tipos de hábitat, y ellos prefieren usar lo cual les conviene y los cuales lo apto para sobrevivir en este tipo de ambientes, los cuales son profundos. De hecho, uno de los organismos que más se suele observar en este tipo de ambientes de, de rocas con hartas eh, con altos orificios como tipo cueva, fallas y fracturas eh, son los langostinos ellos aprovechan bastante bien lo que son este tipo de, de sustrato o complejidad y heterogeneidad debido a que suelen utilizar estas cuevas para habitarlas e incluso escapar de la, de la, de la succión Asimismo, también podemos observar estos langostinos de gran tamaño, que son del género pseudomúnida o principalmente la familia de humunidide, los cuales siempre suelen estar eh, enganchados a zonas escarpadas o en grandes corales. Some of that. And Mary here to explain about of the <laughs> scalp luster too. Okay. Anita, that's first <laughs> this is fun, sorry Andy. First this fun and after that this the poly kids and you wanna collect? Or what you just want to see? Anita good some of the poly kids and maybe collect the the sponge. No lo sé. Yeah, that sponge that is the <laughs> perfect pillow to sleep. Okay. And now we are serving um, a dead, dead poliopogon sponge, and maybe we'll find it a a poliopogon garden. I cross my finger. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Excellent. What about you? I'm, I'm, I'm all brilliant now that you're here. And if I don't want to know what something is, I can just ask. <laughs> Spelling and everything. Thank you. 
a few minutes ago uh, talking about of maybe founded a polio pogon garden maybe we found uh, this garden now we are serving a um, feronematid sponge that is the, like a bowl and the large one is a polio pogon Como decía en un momento atrás, eh, podíamos, pues posiblemente, como vimos estos, estas espículas, eh, bueno, las estructuras muertas de esponja, podríamos haber encontrado un jardín de poliopogón, que es esta esponja alargada, pero de momento encontramos un jardín, posiblemente ya lleguemos a algo que sea mayormente un jardín, pero encontramos grandes agregaciones de eh, esponjas feronematides, que son estas esponjas con forma de bola. que una de las características principales de esta esponja feronematide es que no la encontramos en las inmersiones que se realizaron en, durante eh, el ener en enero, el mes de enero pasado, que fue una de las esponjas las cuales no pudimos observar en la cordillera de Nazca, que, lo cual es más típica de la zona de Salaji Gómez. Poliopogon, yeah. And uh, now we are serving uh, the large poliopogon with the squad lofter in the top. Las pseudomonías las dejamos como pseudomonías porque son como distintas que el otro squad. Vale. Ok, we are serving in the top a uh, squad luster to the genus uh, pseudomonida. And the hermit crab may be, be um, parapagurus or pagurid hermit crab. Megan said me that the polyopogon structure or polyopogon oh, have a shape uh, like a killer <laughs> or cr uh, crab manus <laughs> or crab hands, but it's very gross. And <laughs> the squad lobster say hello to Sebastian. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome picture. Thank you. This is the first time we uh, with uh, this type of scorpion fish. Yeah, poor fish. You want to stop and look at this, or? Oh, no, okay. Look at the picture. But I don't know what is the side of this sponge. Maybe try to collect. Yeah, stop. Fred, we're coming to a stop here. Oh, yeah. Tiene una ferro nematida, pero es muy grande. I think that is a B1 to the bio box. Maybe try to find it a, a small one. I think. Yeah. 
than centimeters of diameter, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there? Yeah, I think it's a V1 to the biobox, or maybe we found it, uh, when we found it, uh, the other a small one. You want this one in a biobox, you say? That's four inches. What do you think? Okay, okay, collect. <laughs> yeah. In a biobox, or where do you want it? Uh, put it on a bio box, bio box, it's okay. okay. Thank you, Dr. Sure. Land. But I think it's maybe a much bigger, but... Biobox one BB one C is okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So, thank you. Ya cuando la saquen, tengan cuidado porque esa la, la, la raíz es eh, muy como fibra de vidrio, así que cuando la saquen con guante es grueso. Ok. Ok, thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> ok. Keep moving, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now we are serving a long arm crab, a partinopid uh, crab. Okay, thank you. We, we collected before. What, the red thing? Uh, that one? Do you want to see it or are you good? Um, I think it's very really difficult to collect that. It's, uh, it's a cup coral, but oh, it's okay. very, it's very, super brittle. Yeah. Oh, I'm okay with that, with a good picture, it's okay. okay. That's the again. Another scorpion fish. Now we're saving another uh, scorpion fish and a scrub lofter hiding in the in the caves. Still asteroid corals. Another scrub lofter. Many squatty. 
looks like a squatty party. <laughs> few minutes ago I was talking about of this type of sponge and now we found that the pseudo garden <laughs> fully pogon garden but now we, we have had two big two large polypogon and the other squatty say the other squatty maybe they say hello <laughs> and the colorful Henry crab. Como señalaba anteriormente, como hace unos minutos atrás, eh, conversábamos aquí con parte del equipo, bueno, principalmente con Marisa, que se vieron eh, algunos cuerpos muertos de esponja, principalmente la espícula, eh, la red de espícula que forma esta esponja, y teorizábamos que probablemente podríamos encontrar eh, algún campo de poliopogon, que era esta esponja alargada, y quizás, quizás podamos encontrar uno de estos campos, ya que en una de las inmersiones en el, la cordillera de Nazca encontramos un campo bastante extenso de estas grandes esponjas. Yo viendo la, la distancia del, del láser, si, si uno quisiera calcular el tamaño de, la, de los organismos presentes en, el, en la presente inmersión, el láser tiene una distancia aproximadamente de 10 centímetros. Entonces, con la distancia de este láser nosotros podemos hacernos una idea de qué tan grande es el organismo y si este puede alcanzar dentro de, una, de un contenedor, puede ser un biobox o un coral quiver. Y así mismo seguimos observando esponja feronematides, que es la esponja que acabamos de colectar. Una de las cosas que comentaba hace poco con parte de los colegas a los cuales están a bordo, que al momento de la revisión o eh, en el momento de procesar esta esponja hay que tener mucho cuidado, debido a que las espículas de esta, de esta esponja están formadas por sílice, que es el mismo compuesto del vidrio, y como las esponjas de cristal contienen redes de espículas, las cuales son mucho más firmes que las de esponje. Estas espículas forman una, una red que es bastante compleja, la cual es similar a tocar fibra de vidrio. Entonces, por ende, hay que tener las precauciones necesarias para, la, para su correcta manipulación.
and now we're funded the glass sponge neighborhood polypogon neighborhood maybe <laughs> or ferromatic garden ¿Qué es lo que? Ah. Ok, entonces nos decía que ya posiblemente encontramos una zona de campos de esponja Hay que ver si es que estas se extienden o son más abundantes hacia los 500 metros de profundidad Esperemos que, sea, que así sea Recordando que las esponjas de cristal, tanto la esponja como los corales, como anémonas E incluso pequeños bivaldo, bivalvos, lo siento nos pueden, eh, pueden brindar hábitat y refugio para otros organismos, denominándolo como form especies formadoras de hábitat, siendo importantes para brindar eh, refugio para otros organismos para que estos puedan cazar y no ser cazados. Ya lo he reiterado en varias ocasiones, pero principalmente esa es una de las características principales que nos ofrecen estos organismos en estas zonas remotas y prístinas. Ahora vemos por el rabo, puede ser que encontremos <risa> más corales arriba. <risa> And now we are serving a coral rabo. Maybe we'll we will find uh, corals. Maybe uh, at 400 meters. I cross my finger again. <laughs> Quizás uh, se observa mucho coral muerto o estructuras coralinas en la, entre, las fa entre las fallas y, y, y fracturas de las rocas, por lo cual nos indicaría que quizás hacia los 400 metros de profundidad podamos encontrar extensos campos de corales. Sí, por eso ahora se podría conectar. ¿Ya? ¿Bolt? ¿Es ok? ¿Qué do you think es más fácil de conectar? I think. I don't know. <laughs> This one is. Half a. More structure to collect. Ahora estamos tratando de conectar esas cosas Ari, que son corales copas. Corales copas. Copa. Sí. Ah, bueno, sí, como el de uh -huh. O sea, se, recién no se podía colectar porque había muy poquito. Entonces, en el número 6 está bien. ¿Puedo ver aquí? Digas, eh, en el número 6 porque en el 5 está el tritón. Vale, ok. Ya Entonces ahí lo van a tratar. Ok. Hola, buenos días. Aquí Ariana Mecho sustituyendo al Maxi. Es hora de desayunar, son las 7 y media de la mañana, así que estamos haciendo turnos para poder desayunar todos juntos para que no quede nadie sin desayunar.
coming to a stop, okay, thank you. It's easier the other one, you can take the, the, the one that the easier for you. Whichever one, whichever one you want to get done. I don't care, I can, you can take whatever of just collected the corals. De nuevo estamos en un monte inexplorado de la dorsal de Salas y Gómez, en el último dive de esta expedición, 
intentando eh, abarcar desde los 900 metros hasta los 250, se encuentra a la cima de este monte y hasta ahora hemos visto relativamente poca fauna y ahora estamos llegando a zonas con muchos más corales y eh, spondylus vemos que son estas conchas de bivalvos que se encuentran enganchadas en la roca muchos de ellos deben ser fósiles o muy antiguos en todo caso y también grandes eh, esponjas como, como esta que vemos aquí. ¿Cómo era el nombre de esta? Poliopogon. Como esta eh, esponja del género poliopogon. que podemos apreciar que eh, se están viendo bastante, eh, son bastante comunes ahora estas esponjas, sin embargo eh, no las hemos visto o en todo caso las hemos visto en menor número en los otros montes. De hecho en los otros montes se caracterizaban por eh, muchas más de las esponjas parecidas a esta que tenemos ahora en pantalla. Aquí podemos ver otras de estas esponjas que son relativamente grandes. Aquí con este láser que mide 10 centímetros es el que nos permite apreciar lo grandes que son estas esponjas que seguramente tengan entre... Eh, ten, cien, ¿Cómo? La base son como 10 centímetros. Solo la base ya son como 10 centímetros, como decía Marisa. Posiblemente esas esponjas tengan muchísimos años, tal vez decenas o centenas de años, centenares de años. También vemos estos pequeños corales rojos, que son corales solitarios, los cop corals. Dijo el Maxi cómo se llamaban estos no. corales, los corales de los corales. El tejo. Sí. Estos coralitos son coralitos eh, eh, solitarios, que se llaman, son corales solitarios. Son, a diferencia de los otros corales, que son como
Capla to Worm, Ribbon Worm. Aquí vemos un, un gusano, eh, no sé cómo se llama en castellano, un Ribbon Worm. ¿En el De este teníamos, ¿verdad? Habíamos colectado. Eh, creo que sí, pero no valía la pena colectarlo porque se, se deshace. Ok. Ya, la cop coral. Una nice foto. Ah, no, dijo que sí lo colectaron. ¿Ah, sí? Ok. Ya, <risa> yes, collect. Ya, <risa> 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 yeah, please. With the, with the arm. <laughs> no, no, no. With the suction. suction? Yeah, yeah, because it's, it broke. It's 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 yeah. But I don't know if it makes like other worms that it broke and after they have two individuals. I'm not sure. But a suction is the best way. But they're not stretchy like gummy worms. And after collect this number ten, we can mm -hmm. cut. Probably we see we will see changes in the upper part of the simon because currently we are observing another pattern. For example, we have less corals than, or at least shallower coral fill, I sponge fill than in the other ones, and also this kind of cup corals that we don't see in the other simons, at least not in this high number. Yeah, then. Maybe we can see, we can, we will observe some changes in the shallowest part of the seamount. Estaba comentando que es posible que en la parte más humera de este monte veamos algunos cambios con respecto a lo que han sido los últimos montes, ya que estamos viendo que no siguen el mismo patrón que los demás. De hecho, hemos tardado bastante en observar los campos de, de esponjas y estamos viendo, por ejemplo, estos campos de corales solitarios que no habíamos visto en los otros montes.
kauan. Se pueden apreciar muchos corales solitarios, están en gran número, así como viendo muchísimas más esponjas en, con forma más eh, frágil que en otros sitios. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Mike. Trifosa, porque tiene iridiscencia. Hola, ¿qué tal? Maxi aquí de nuevo. ¿Y encontramos campo de polipos? Todavía no. Okay. Ah, esos capcoral eh, rojitos. Sí, sí. Pero esos no nos habían salido antes. No, no. Las esponjas estas están eh, en los últimos tampoco. Entonces, uh -huh. Igual cuando llegamos a mi esofotito, ya es diferente. Sí, en esos campos es, es nuevo. Bueno, como decíamos, estamos hablando hace un poco. El campo de corales copas, los cuales vemos, estos corales copas de color rojizo. Eh, nunca los habíamos visto a lo largo de las inmersiones, lo cual es nuevo y encontramos ahora un campo de ellos, lo cual es interesante porque nos define qué tan diferente podría ser lo que encontremos en la cima. De lo que vemos ahora, 
podemos observar que ha cambiado un poco la, la composición de las especies sésiles y así también un, la composición de las especies móviles. Observando eh, distintos tipos de esponjas, al principio empezamos a observar esponjas de, eh, de, de la familia feronematide y algunas poliopogon. Ahora se pueden observar algunas especies eh, alguna especie de, de esponjas tubo de la familia eh, Euplectelide y hace unos minutos se vio una estructura similar a una farrea. Posiblemente farrea erecta. Asimismo, acompañado de estos corales copas rojizos que vimos hace un momento, también podemos observar corales copas, los típicos corales copas de del género carofilia. Y entre medio de las fallas o fracturas de esta roca, podemos encontrar eh, nadando entre los intersticios o nadando entre medio de las estructuras césiles, algunos ojudos, eh, ojudos azules. En algunos casos, a los, a los peces de la familia epigónide, o <coughs> géneros epigonus, se les conoce como ojudo o besugo. Cualquiera puede elegir el que más le acomode. Sí, abajo. Alexa, I need a good video of that, of the base to the top, please. And finally, a close up of the polyps. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Huh? You just want an arm and shot, or you want to need some? Well, I need that. Yeah, the base to the top, and after that, maybe take a branch of the top of the coral.
Hello, Hello. I have also needed to report the, the whole the whole yeah. portal, yeah. but flying around. Yeah. Por eso está feliz. Eh, ¿Cómo está? 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 Yeah, and it'll take uh, a branch, or uh, maybe the top. The top is gonna be tricky because if we are stable enough. Ah, okay. Uh, we'll in the middle of the, on the top of the, the coral is okay. okay. Mm. Like I said, the reason I'm coming around is because okay. I just have a, I have a turn in my boat. Maybe take this part here, or yeah. it's okay. Oh, for the sample. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Take, a, take a branch of here, of this part. Yeah. And um, after that, maybe slurp the, the snail for Javier, and Javier requests the... <laughs> 
the snails. Thanks a lot. And again, thanks a lot, guys. What do you think they call squivers okay? Is it 12? Or yeah. take you to... What is it? From... We'll get it at 12. Okay, 12? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's close enough, I think. They're just a little bit floating because we're just running around for one round. Ready for the... Ahí vamos a ir viendo qué se puede hacer. Bueno. Javier también pidió caracoles. Hi guys, uh, Maxi here again. Now we are serving a large coral, Prebnoi corals. That is a gorgeous coral. And this coral provide a house to the different animal, for example, squat luster, uh, barnacles, and snails too. And maybe one, one shrimp also. están Gamaxino, eh, espero que estén bien. En este momento lo que estamos viendo es un magnífico coral eh, primnoidio. Una de las cosas curiosas de este gran, de este colosal coral principalmente es que provee de, de refugio a distintos tipos de organismos. Como pueden ver, se observan algunos langostinos de distintos colores, algunos rosados, unos naranjos, eh, algunos um, cirripedios en la base y asimismo caracoles que se encuentran en la base de este coral. Los animales que viven sobre este coral eh, eligen distintos tipos de zonas de este coral para vivir, la cual les permite vivir de mejor manera. Algunos se encuentran en la cima, otros se encuentran en la parte media y otros se encuentran en la base, como podemos ver con los caracoles. Yeah, and I need a, a good soon of the polyps. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm so happy and oh, <laughs> thanks a lot.
¿Qué, qué le hizo Jerón en el cuero del cuido de Alonso? ¿Un cara podía? Abro sí, Daris, ya. Thank you, Alex. I need the lasers on before to collect the snails. Pero que yo sé que mejor me en el 5 porque están los capcora, es más fácil de verlo. Porque en la... Um, we can put in the snails in the jar number 6 with the capcora, so it's okay. Because they are different animals. Yeah, I need a close-up first, and after that, it's too old. <laughs> and have you said that? He's... He's here. Yeah. Smells bad. Ah. Mm, yep. I, I don't know if... Yeah, try to find, their, find others. Because that's... Uh, barnacles. This is Iron Crab. Um, maybe on the other side. No, it's in the in the in the base. Maybe just higher, yeah. just in the base. Yeah, maybe on the other side of the base that we can't see right now. Mm. Como ve la maniobra, sacarlos ahí de la, de la base está complicado, se recorre. Si es que Javier lo quiere, está, está como entre medio. Sí, está. ¿Ah? No, está complicado. No, no. Pero esto es muy complicado, no hay problema. No te preocupes. No, no, no. Si puede llegar, lo puede llegar. Lo puede llegar, lo puede llegar. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. We'll try. I'm going to bring the head around and get closer. 
Texas gave you porch. Do you want porch as well in the budget? No, and I like, oh, you know, no, 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 no. Are you wanting this cloud as well? Well. Ah, the number six, sorry, Mike. You don't have suction yet, Mike. Yeah. Do you want to get this crab also or no? Crab? He wants to know if you want the crab as a bonus or not. Yeah, the bonus. I'm happy with the, with the Henry crab, with the shells and the lemon. That is a bonus sample. <laughs> okay, the first one. Well, the first say, don't worry, our mission, no problem. And we tried to collect a sun squad from, from Mari. From up higher? Yeah, from maybe to the middle of, or of the top of that coral. I will. Well, I can't fly in, maybe I'll fly. I'm just going to move the porch in a little bit. Even so it flies a little more stable. Yeah. See this guy? Yeah. Still got Is it okay to go to six? Uh, down yeah, the six is okay. Yeah, I'm just making sure we have the right sample. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Mary will be happy. <laughs> Time to keep going. <laughs> wow, so majestic <laughs> coral. <laughs>
Jerko, feel free to introduce yourself, please. Eh, hola a todos, mi nombre es Jerko Castillo, soy estudiante de la Universidad de Valparaíso. Eh, bueno, estoy estudiando Biología Marina y me invitó aquí mi profesor de Biología para poder realizar mi tesis sobre la macrofauna de, montes, eh, de fondo blando de los montes submarinos. Y bueno, espero que les guste la transmisión de este último detalle. ¿Y qué te ha parecido la, esta experiencia a bordo, Yerko? Eh, bueno, para mí realmente ha sido un desafío. Es mi, mi primera vez eh, embarcado durante tanto tiempo. Y bueno, fue una experiencia muy grata. Y gracias a todos por, por ayudarme y eh, por ayudarme en este proceso. ¿Y cuáles crees que van a ser la, los de, próximos desafíos después de tener las muestras una vez ya colectadas? Eh, procesarlo, procesarlo, <risa> procesar todas las muestras que, que sacamos y bueno, ahí ver qué, qué muestras nos salen. Bueno, y, y de estas muestras, ¿cuáles crees tú que ha sido como el punto donde, eh, el punto más interesante de, de, la, presente, de la presente campaña? Eh, viendo las muestras todas o las sí es tu, tu precisión en general como ah, mi precisión en general eh, bueno yo creo que podrían ser eh, quizás los corales he visto que hemos sacado muchos corales y, y nada simplemente eso muchas gracias Jerko muchas gracias a todos por escuchar espero que lo estén disfrutando And feel free to introduce yourself, please. Hola, uh, yo me llamo Rosana, and that's as far as my Spanish goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm from the Netherlands, uh, from Wageningen University, and I work together with Esmoy and Cat uh, Universidad Católica del Norte on the Squat Lobster Project, and that has been absolutely amazing. Uh, in total, with this uh, cruise and the last one in the Nesca, we probably have new 50 new species of squat lobsters to science, just uh, only squat lobsters. Um, and yeah, we look at the morphologically and physiologically um, diversity of squat lobsters. Uh, so we also look at how their basal metabolic rate is, and that also changed a lot throughout the sea mounts and throughout the gradient um, uh, of the, that the seamounts represent. So that's uh, super interesting to show that these seamounts are not only diverse in community composition, which you can look at the stream and what Maxi is mostly working on, but also by the uh, selections that they are uh, uh, having on the squat lobsters. Um, and Yeah, together with Esmoy, we of course hope to preserve this amazing, beautiful, uh, unique place on Earth. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, Rosan, uh, how, how has this experience on board uh, been for you? Uh, I think a lot. Uh, I, yeah, it's uh, really a dream come true. Uh, it's been also for a bit like a crazy dream for me. <laughs> I kind of feel like I fell into this, uh, which is the best thing I ever stumbled into. Uh, I feel like I'm the most random person of the science group on board <laughs> because uh, yeah I just uh, happened kind of happened to be here um, which is something that's crazy to imagine. <laughs> so it's it feels like that but I think for a lot of people it might feel like that because this is just a really crazy experience. And 
how many squaddies, new new species of squaddies do you have? Uh, maybe do you have new species of squaddie? Um, we, we what do you think? Yeah, we think 50 now. Wow. For <laughs> yesterday, two days ago it was 40, but today uh, Basti said it's more around 50. Um, yeah, that's a lot. And on this cruise, I guess it would be 30, and on the last one, 20. But of course, it's not like new species for science actually takes a lot of time to really know. Maybe there are just different morphs that look different, but are the same species, and that still has to be investigated. But we at least have now 50 different morpho species which were not uh, found before in this area. Wow, that is a bigger number. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rosanne. Yeah, thank you. No, this is a Lophoides. This is other family of 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 lofi form. That is the common name of that fish is goosefish. It has a long spine. Yeah, it looks like a chownak, but it's different. Huh? Huh? Lofi, yes. But there's a bit more than que los rapes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Um, and here in Mission Control, we have also uh, Megan. And uh, Megan, feel, feel free to introduce yourself, please. Uh, Sophie? Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on our last dive. It's been such a pleasure to be with you and to get to work here in Mission Control with the night shift. Uh, you're now meeting a mix of us, day shift and night shift, in the same room. We're working uh, double time as we're trying to make it through our waypoints. But uh, uh, I'm Megan Francis. I'm an undergraduate marine biology student at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. I'm here as a student of our chief scientist, Dr. Aaron Easton. Uh, I'm here uh, to fulfill two course credits, one for marine research and the other is for a marine internship. And it's just been an absolute blast to be here and to be learning so much. So thank you. I hope you guys enjoy this time with us. And Megan, uh, how has this experience on board been for you? This, it's kind of hard to describe what this experience has been like, aside from absolutely incredible and a little bit surreal at times. I think especially because I really love watching dives myself. It's really, really surreal sometimes to be on, on this side of, of the dive streams and getting to grow so much and understanding um, the, the ecological relationships and being able to describe the the benthos of the Salas y Gomez Ridge has just been absolutely amazing. Um, I feel like I've grown a lot, um, especially under the mentorship of Maritza and Maxi. Um, really feel like I'm so excited to go back to my university and bring what I've learned with me. Uh, especially as I have an upcoming uh, abstract due for the College of Science Research Symposium that's there. I'm hoping to present um, a, an abstract related to the uh, description of a morphological assessment of algae in the mesophotic zones. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Megan. Of course, Maxi. Thank you. And finally, <laughs> Emilia? Uh, feel free to introduce yourself, please. Oh, siento libre de presentarte. Yora na korua ra anui kito kuhua ai o ra panui. Mi nombre es Emilia Palma Tuki. Soy bióloga marina egresada de la Universidad Católica del Norte. Junto a mis compañeros nos tocó en Eh, las exploraciones de, del turno de la noche, de 12 de la noche hasta 12 del día. Eh, ha sido una experiencia súper bonita, gratificante y, y enriquecedora, tanto de conocimiento 
nuevo como de experiencia eh, de mis compañeros. Eh, siento que es una oportunidad muy linda estar acá y poder ver de manera directa el fondo marino y los distintos montes eh, marinos de la cordillera de Salas y Gómez. Muchas gracias, Daniel. Ya, es eso. Ah, ya. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> ¿Ah? No lo sé. ¿Qué decir algo más? ¿Seguro? Take a piece of. Let me see, maybe with branch? I don't know. Mike, you need to take one branch without touching any of the branches. Impossible to collect with uh, that Scott Loster? Oh, anything's possible with Mike's here. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in here and put it in firebox or. Or quarter of quiver, the bed aside. Okay, well, we'll open a quiver and get a quiver in Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. No, no, no. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah 14 is okay. It's totally open. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jan Maximiliano Fernanda Peguerra, but you can call me Maxi. I'm a marine biologist and PhD student too. Uh, for me, this experience uh, was amazing. Um, I'm so happy for staying here on board of the Falcor 2. I'm so glad for stay here and very thankful with the pilot for their support with the sample request, different sample request. Um, that is all. I'm so happy for stay here. Um, I think that this experience of board of the Falcor 2 was a wonderful experience to me. Um, and thank you so much for for watching us and or watching this streaming. Hola, ¿qué tal? Aquí Maxi nuevamente. Como comentaba, en eh, presentarme un poquito. Yo soy biólogo marino y estudiante de doctorado en la Universidad Católica del Norte de Chile. Y como comentaba hace un momento, eh, estoy muy feliz de haber participado de esta expedición y haber sido partícipe de esta expedición a bordo del Falcor 2. Me siento muy agradecido y afortunado de estar aquí y asimismo dar mi muy agradecido de los pilotos los cuales han apoyado bastante con las distintas peticiones de muestras 
de, de todos los, los científicos a bordo. Muy agradecido y muy contento de ser participado de esta maravillosa expedición. Yeah, I need a good picture first to the polyps and square bluster. A quick zoom, it's okay. <laughs> Time to keep going. Yeah. Do you think that's what it is? Because I can't think of anything else that would work. <laughs> Long, 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 long arm.
Bueno, continuando con nuestra eh, inmersión, eh, estamos principalmente observando un campo de esponja feronematide, esponja las cuales solo hemos visto a partir de esta dorsal de Salas y Gómez. Eh, asimismo, eh, de a poco empiezan a asomarse algunas esponjas del género poliopogon, que suelen ser estas esponjas de gran tamaño, las cuales son bastante alargadas. Hace un par de de minutos o un, quizás una hora atrás hablábamos con Marisa sobre si era posible encontrar campos de esponja quizás no encontramos campos de esponja de poliopogon pero sí encontramos campos de esponjas de de feronematide que son estas esponjas en forma de bola con una raíz que la sujeta al, al sustrato esta raíz está formada por una red de espículas las cuales es bastante diferente a la red la cual conforma su cuerpo Without a good picture, it's okay. Whoop! <laughs> Such a Okay, it's okay. We collected that small luster in the morning. Micha's corner. <laughs> Micha's corner. Micha's corner. Collect the Micha. <laughs> 
do the close up of and after that of the cucumber. Sí, primero el eso por request. Sí, that one. Yeah, this one. Spondylus and the baby squatty. <laughs> okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, now, okay, now I, need, I, I need a close up of the sea cucumber. At least. Uh, Ari. Es que puede tener... Eh, sí. Por eso. <risa> María la Peña es la pena el maquillaje. <risa> Okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah. Can we collect that? Uh, so you can put it in the in the coral quiver thirteens. Okay. Fourteen. Sorry, it's already open. No. Ah. Oh, I forget. I forget. Sorry, sorry. For fourteen is okay. Ah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Como el logo de, de, de instituto. Micha foto, te vas a sacar una foto en tu esquina. Ahora sí. Micha esconde. that close to the door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, I'm happy with that. 
¿Estás feliz con eso? No hay caracol. Así que devolvamos. Vale, pues devolvemos a tu parte. <risa> gracias. Gracias, Micha. Hace poco tuvimos una visita de nuestro querido amigo Miche que nos vino a sacar fotos, fotitos para la página. <risa> Can we try to slurp the pulikit? Sure. I'm going to throw a little bit more. Mm. Can you quiver? Ah, H, it's okay. <laughs> Can you quiver? Can you quiver? Number eight, just okay. Yeah. You know who we're going after, Mike? No. Okay, we're going after. Oh, okay. The little guy that was under the. Ah. Oh, you think? Is this a maximum or not? That's maximum, Jim. We'll get okay. that focus. Okay. I need a. Okay, I need a. I close the first of the the body oh, before to slow. We go. After the collection, the, that poly uh, lost this scale. Okay. Huh? No, no, it's a poly. It's a polynoid. Yes, but it's a polynoid. Some family. Have you seen? No, I've seen. It's very strange. I'm sorry, that was. The last one. Sí. Okay. Uh, okay, it's time to slurp the polygon. Slurp. <laughs> Oh, do you want the section on or off? Oh, I'm just saying. <laughs> Should I just pull that? I'm not angry, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Get, this, get that fish while you're at it. Oh. Get the fish. I'm the fish. The fish when you pull the fish. Yeah, that's true. Oh, 
Ah, uh, late. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the bullet goes. It's inside of the yard. Yeah. Are, you, are you worried about the bullet keep running away? I'll get that little squat is not late. You want to put it in one another? Turn on the yeah. side yeah, that's with right. With the poly key? Ah, he's, he's there. Well, are you okay with the poly key going with the spot lobster? No. I ah, know. Okay, only, only the poly keys and keep going. <laughs> Marisa, you something? Yeah. Uh, Marisa, you're going to collect the langostino, right? Yes, I think it's one of the langostinos. Yeah, I think it's one of the langostinos. Marisa, the old langostinos. The word. Ah, uh, okay. Sí, cayó. Sí, sí. Está ganando por ahí. Sí mismo, el poliqueto que, que se acaba de colectar es un poliqueto de la familia de polinoide y este poliqueto es comensal de la, del pepino de mar que acabamos de colectar que si Ari me confirma es del género Onegrofanta confirmado del género Onegrofanta y una de las curiosidades que tiene este pepino de mar principalmente que pertenece al orden El Pidida ¿es correcto eso? ¿es familia de Imaride? Ya y una de las características de este grupo es que pueden poseer algunos caracoles los cuales se, se, se pegan a su cuerpo. Que hace poco el doctor Jarciane describió una especie de caracol que el cual no estaba descrito para esta zona del Pacífico. Bueno. De hecho, bueno, ahí eh, Ariadna me, 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 me recordaba que hace, unas, hace unos tres montes submarinos atrás eh, colectamos un holoturia, un pepino de mar, ya típico con forma de pepino, que es ya sin patas, sin estructuras externas como proyecciones, con forma de pepino tradicional. Y en el momento de tenerlo a bordo y... y y sacar las fotografías correspondientes y analizar y ver que, a qué especie correspondía eh, encontramos un pequeño pez alargado que es el es conocido principalmente como los peces perla que estos peces por lo general
One is so huge in the background. Wow. Um, I'm gonna, can we, when you're settled down, can we put the lasers back on and then I'm gonna do some zooms and then. staring at us from in there. Super densely packed the polyps. Gosh, I don't know, there might be three different sewing methods on here.
so pretty. All right. All right, so if there's any more zooms you want before we get to take the sample. Okay. <laughs> Are you starting to switch over to day schedule already, Juliana? Yeah, it's a big, it's a big colony, so. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking that, like, this piece in there might, it has pretty much everything. It's got the primnoid. Yeah. This should be an easy one. Yeah. The only thing the only thing is I think there's a third species of zoanthid in there and I'm trying to figure out how to get it without taking like an enormous piece. So, so yeah. Yeah. we'll get closer to that one anyways so maybe it takes Okay. it's like right here is this other one that I think is a third species so So we're just getting uh, some more glamour shots here. And then we're gonna do a sample collection. You read my mind. So this is a large primnoid that has been overgrown by at least two species of zoanthid. I'm not sure if there's actually a third one in there or not. So cover has a is home for a lot of squat lobsters, crabs, hermit <laughs> crabs. Yeah. 
Where are you sitting? Alright, so we're just doing a pilot chain. Andy's coming in for Mike. And Zach is coming in for Alex. Okay. We're all, uh, we're gonna Enjoy. So we're gonna probably have to hop Yeah, it's pretty. It must be pretty exciting. It is. It's pretty nice for our last dive to see these ancient from nodes are good. The biggest coral I've seen in a while this deep. Okay. So we're moving? Yeah, we're just gonna. Uh, so if you're done with your. We are done. Thank okay. You. Yeah, we're just gonna hop up a little bit closer, I think, to get. Is that three different things? Stuff right here? Uh, yeah, I think there might. There's at least two, maybe a third species of zoanthid on the host coral, which is a primnoid. Yeah. So we like to take this piece here because it's got two of the species of zoanthid and some of the host primnoid on it. So we'll take this piece and then there's a piece further up I'm gonna, gonna wanna try to grab too. And this is going quickly? Yes. You wanna do the ones on the rail or do you need to push out here? I don't know. I mean, I think we've seen evidence that there used to be these huge corals on some of the other places we've dove because we've seen these um, very similar looking bases that were left behind. Um, so I don't know if maybe there were some on some of the other seamounts. We just weren't on the right ridge to see them. It might be that this one has less sediment flux to it, so they're still surviving. I'm not sure why be honest all a lot of different reasons They can do both. They can take over over a spot that's injured or where some of the polyps are gone, and then they can outcompete. So they'll start taking over. Um,
Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Take a leaf off the end. <laughs> yep, that's great. And the polyps are turned down perfectly. Thanks. Ah. <laughs> Made an escape. Thank you, and then we're gonna add another little piece to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, 15. Or actually, maybe we should close it and open another quiver because I think it might be difficult to put the second piece in there.
Yeah, let's go ahead and put that in a different cover. piece that I'm not sure how it's all interconnected but I want these right here so I don't know if you can maybe grab in there mm -hmm. yeah, grab, see, what happens. see what yeah I'm not sure what's gonna come with it but <laughs> yeah Like, pardon me, squatty. Sorry. Alrighty, so it's squatty. Would you be able to go right a little bit and pitch left to where we can see the jaws coming from? right in front of them, that one that where the zoanthids look a little different. Right in front of them. I got it as best I can on the set too, but I don't think it's going to be that great. This run straight in. Yeah, it's this little piece like here so that should branch out from here and come like it's probably connected to all that but i think if you clip right down here. here just under the squatty it should take everything that's connected to it above it without taking that whole you know without taking this which is the rest of that i think so, let's give mr squatty a little bump
awesome. Perfect. Great, thank you. Great, thank you. All right, so yeah, we just collected um, a piece of a primnoid, two pieces actually of a primnoid that have been overgrown by at least two, maybe three species of zoanthid. So we collected a couple pieces to make sure we have all the zoanthids, which are another type of coral. And when you're squared away, we'll continue transecting up towards our next waypoint. A little bit of catching up to do. Actually, let me look at the base really quick of this, because I'm not sure. Actually, can we grab uh, the smallest grate here with suction? Mm -hmm. You can stack it into four, which we're already indexed to. We do, so. <laughs> they were busy while I was sleeping. Four, you said? Suction four? Yeah, right of the right, this this really small kind of iridescent shell.
Yes, yes. the snail, yep. <coughs> yeah, so Cam kind of has it blocked, huh? Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Yep. Thanks. All right. Now we can continue transecting. So yeah, this uh, these corals that we're seeing today are quite a bit larger than ones we've seen on the other dives so far this expedition. Um, we've seen evidence, uh, or like an occasional large one, but an evidence that there used to be some large ancient colonies on some of the other dives, but this is the first one where we've seen a number of them still living.
Thanks. Yeah, we're gonna do a few minutes of transecting. We got some catching up to do. Um, yeah, I would guess that these corals um, are probably thousands of years old. So the growth rates tend to be quite slow in the deep sea. So, yeah, quite, quite old. Mm-hmm, yeah, they are. The lasers are on, aren't they? They are now. They are now, there we go, thank you. Looks like a stylosterid. We're continuing to see a number of these cup corals. Coming up on another large colony here of primnoid. This one's in pretty good shape. And just over the hills, a few more large colonies. Pretty impressive. There are a number of smaller colonies here, which is nice. So those are going to be considerably younger and shows that they're still recruiting in the area, which is good until you know, comparatively recently. Intermixed among these primnoids are some sponges, occasionally another species of coral, stylosterid, we saw a plexorid, or does it look like a yellow plexorid not too long ago? It wasn't in a good place to get a good image. Are we going down slope a little bit? I think we're going down slope here for a little bit, so we might be a little further off the seafloor on and off. An impressive number of cup corals laying around. Another species of sponge. When we get to our next waypoint, we'll be near the base. Let's see, there's one of those yellow flick swords mixed in. So yeah, this, because this is our last dive, uh, a number of the crew and the scientists today are going to start trying to shift back onto a day schedule for our eight and a half day transit back. I believe we're something in the ballpark of 1,800 nautical miles off offshore right now. 
until we get the pork. I think near waypoint seven should be the local low. So I think we're going downhill until then. I'm seeing more of these yellow flex swords. Hopefully they're on the upslope. Stylus stair and stop looking corals now as we're nearing the bottom of this down slope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Salazigomas Ridge, which is the seamount chain that we're diving on, is some 2,900 kilometers in length that ex as it extends off of the coast of Chile. So we went to near the end of it, just uh, past Rapa Nui. It goes a little bit further beyond where we went, but until you get to the Mid-Atlantic uh, Mid Ridge there. Not Mid-Atlantic, oh my gosh, the Pacific. <laughs> get my ocean basins right today um from central pacific i have to look up exactly what that ridge is called right there at that junction point but i think it might be the mid pacific rise or yeah anyway so we were most of the way out along the ridge and now we've been working our way back at these last two state last few stations um and we did the further east mounts on the last expedition and on the beginning of this expedition. I think it's a rock. This time, yeah. Hmm.
I think they are designed to make themselves look like a rock, so. this local low before we start moving back up slow. Just coming up on waypoint, our seventh waypoint. So just over halfway through our plan dive. more sediment on these surfaces here. Continuing to see lots of these small cup corals. Squatty. A little fish over there. looks like this sheet with little fractures. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a lot of these are cup corals on the bottom, the little reddish, those are cup corals. We collected a few specimens earlier on this dive. Then we've got some glass sponges. Great job. Are you updated waypoint, please? Update, thank you.
primero son de esas fondas que tiene como un... ¿Las cornollitos? Que tiene un bowl. Esta... Esas que vienen. Sí, el Maxi conectó una pero a mi mate. Okay. Está en el BB1A. Ah. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Yo sí, sí. a ver qué se llama el nombre. Ya. Uno de esos. Sí, sí. Ya, yeah. perfecto. Um, let's get a nice zoom on them. I think they might be stylus terrids, but if something different, then we'll want them. Yeah, they look like stylus terrids. Yep, we're good. Thanks. Squatty. We're just starting to work our way up this next part of the ridge after a little local low. a different type of sponge come in now.
Can we settle down at this sponge here and collect a specimen? There's one we were seeing some at the last station as well and didn't have a chance to collect. Zoom before collection. Uh, sure, please.
great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. Yeah, sure. It takes you in for just a minute. Y ya colegimos una de esas, ¿cierto? Sí, yo colecté al principio. Sí. Está en el baile box. Perfecto. No aparece. Pero que. Jimbo, can you turn on the mic um, for them back there so they can introduce themselves? Okay. Awesome, thank you. So yeah, I'm just gonna let, we have a couple other scientists in the room right now, so I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. We have Emilia and Maritza. Hola a todos, soy Maritza Castro, estudiante de Biología Marina en la Universidad Católica del Norte, eh, y estoy haciendo mi tesis con plumas de mar del Parque Marino Nazca Desventuradas. En este crucero estuve en la función de identificar especies, ayudando al procesamiento de las muestras cuando llegaban de, después del ROV y también ayudando en la planilla para no perder ninguna de las muestras que, que deberían llegar. Espero que hayan disfrutado todos los dives y muchas gracias por, por vernos. Okay. Y ahora en la Toa, la Anui, eh, Ponui, muy buenos días. Eh, espero que todos se encuentren bien y estén disfrutando de nuestra última inversión en, eh, en los montes submarinos de la cordillera de Salas y Gómez. Eh, mi nombre es Emilia Palma Tuki, eh, soy bióloga marina. Eh, al igual que mi compañera eh, Maritza, estuve, estuve en la planilla de datos donde se veía y se, se anotaban la, la, las especies que se extraían en cada exploración y además estuve aprendiendo y ayudando en el silo que es como un sistema eh, donde se eh, captura eh, como la imagen de las especies para lograr ide identificarlas y luego hacer como una lista de todas las especies que se observaron en, en las ex distintas exploraciones. Espero que se encuentren muy bien y espero también que hayan disfrutado todas las inversiones eh, y bueno, que viva la ciencia y que como esta exploración se realizó, ojalá que muchas en el mundo se vuelvan a realizar o se estén realizando y recordemos siempre protejamos nuestro océano y las especies y los distintos ecosistemas marinos y naturales que rodean y conforman nuestro hermoso planeta Tierra. Y Orana Maururu, que se encuentre todo muy bien. Muchas gracias. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so that was Maritza and Emilia. They are um, helping uh, as part of the science team. Maritza is a student doing her research on sea pens at the Universidad Católica del Norte, and she's been helping out with the spreadsheet and logging on this expedition as well as making sure all of our samples are processed um, well. And then Emilia is the first Rapa Nui marine biologist. And 
and um, she also was a student at the Universidad Católica del Norte, but has since graduated and works for the city in Rapa Nui. And um, yeah, she's also been helping making sure we collect everything and organize, and everything's kept organized and well processed. As they were speaking, we're kind of shifting. We've been seeing more of a sponge garden than the coral garden than we were seeing before. We haven't been seeing the cup corals anymore, but we've seen a number of different species of sponges. This area is a little more sediment coated than um, the other part of the ridge that we just came down from. So do a quick zoom look around, check out this fish and see what else we can see. Yeah. Now you hold still. No, no a little squatty down there. This fish looks like it's tired out. Can we try to change the focus, the focus on its face a sure. bit? That's max zoom there? Yeah, I think this is, it's almost max zoom, yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's good, thanks. Yeah, it just looks like it's exhausted. <laughs> yes. He wants to collect the fish. Yeah, I'm not sure what was on that hermit crab, if that was part of the original mollus shell or if that was like maybe an anemone or something growing on it. Anthemastis or pseudoanthemastis and a yeah. That looks like we're gonna start seeing more corals again here. Yeah, it looks like stylosteroids from here, but
I think I'm gonna leave this fish be. Okay, let's almost just out of the bed. No, it's it's much largo than eighty centimeters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Yep. See, those puntos de la lasers are seventy centimeters. Yes, that's a poco más largo. Fucking dog. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure which fish it is. Um, kind of wanted to collect it, but it's a little bit too big for suction, so. I'm not sure I want to use the net for it. Can you look at, is that another fish right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, cool, thanks. It's a good size urchin right there. You would thought there'd be so many fish in the sea, you know? <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah, let's zoom in on one of these urchins that's in this little sediment track. Ah, I think they're anemones actually. some tube anemones settled in in this little bit of sediment. quite as extensive. No, we've seen a bit of it, but this conglomerate stuff, but... It's weird how it's split, too. It looks like it split the rocks. We have to split it like the inclusions, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we're going up to around 200 meters up today, and yeah, we're still a little behind schedule, but can we go ahead and stop here and look at this rock outcrop? There's some anthemastis here, so I think I'm going to collect that. We haven't collected some in a while. in there. That's uh, a little crab. Yeah, it is. Yeah, a little 
squatty there. No crab there. Whoops, too far. Oh no, come on, stay there. sorts of little squatties around. Let's see what this is. This looks like... Nice. Hermit crab with looks like an anemone growing on. It's back. Shell. Thanks. Um, if we could collect this one here, that'd be great. Um, we can put it in a quiver. is having nothing in it, yeah. It's like when we died, did dive 666 and Adam and Doug wouldn't write 666, they would write number six, six number six, six. Well, six. I know, I thought that was so funny. Yeah, that was actually a really good dive for us too. I mean... You don't want to get Satan all up in your dive, you know? Yeah, I think the only thing that happened on that dive that wasn't great was the whole hyperspectral camera system. Wasn't there something else too, though? I, I don't know. I feel like there was something else. I'm just going to remember. Yeah. That's all I remember, but... And the next dive is on 667 is when we saw that sea star that looked like... <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. Looked like what? Yeah, like it was on the cross or something. Yeah, yeah. It was like really funny. <laughs> like, well, if that had been on dive 666, it might have felt, made some people feel better. <laughs> people were all paranoid. Yeah. So this, if you get it near the base, it should... Peel. It'll suck in nice and tight too. Yeah. Well, this is a small guy. It I is. Good. Might be able to knock him off, huh? Yeah, point. I think if you kind of knock him off, and then once it's off, pick it up from its base. So it's so small.
dorks. <laughs> Oops, I wrote that in the wrong one. I just wrote it on the wrong cover. We were talking about 13, so I was thinking we were putting it in 13. Okay, we can proceed. Okay, happy to move? Yep. I think that squad is coming out to like defend. No, I don't know. Some of them are really great. Right? They are, yeah. Get off my lawn. It makes me wonder how some of them we uh, see are missing an arm. I'm like, well, who did you meet that caused you to miss, lose that arm? <laughs> 